meeting. Okay, our next speaker. Now, let me let me tell you what happened. I was reading. I, re I subscribed to Epoch Times or Epoch Times. I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. Very good publication. And what caught my eye is they did a report on how the state of Michigan is in a state, of, according to a report, a study that was done, a state of decline, and we're on our way to become one of the poorest states. And so I, call, I actually contacted the gentleman who did that study, and, that, uh, and he is the head of Michigan Future, Inc., a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization Michigan Futures mission is to be the source of new ideas on how Michigan can succeed as a world-class community in a knowledge-driven economy. And its work is funded by Michigan foundations, and its latest report is a path to prosperity. Anyway, I would like to, uh, to introduce Lou Glazier. He's the president of Michigan Future, Inc., and, and Lou, Thank you for driving all the way out here. Well, you said it was about an hour drive. He did that study, and so and we'll have a Q and A afterwards. Thank you, Lou. Yeah. My pleasure. Uh, no PowerPoint, so I'm not gonna have to worry about technology not working. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've learned from experience that uh, things get too screwed up with technology. Um, so Michigan Future is a think tank that got started in 1991. So when I was one of the co-founders, I've been doing this work for more than 30 years. And our focus is on sort of the economic well-being of Michigan households. Um, we've always, and uh, we have tried very hard to be um, sort of nonpartisan to just really try to learn what's happening in the economy and what's happening to Michigan. Um, and for, um, you know, most of the three decades that I've been doing this, and particularly the last two decades, uh, Michigan's gone from being one of the most prosperous states in the country to one of the poorest states in the country. Uh, and it, um, and that's, you know, I'm gonna walk through our analysis of why that's happened. Uh, the work that I do is with a guy named Don Grimes, who's an economic forecaster at the University of Michigan. We've been doing this stuff together for, uh, for three decades. Uh, and when we started Michigan Future in 91, uh, I think like everybody else at that time, we were really focused on, um, so we knew the economy was changing, um, in part because of globalization, but probably more because of technology. Um, that, uh, and we always started with this notion that, um, that what had made us prosperous in the 20th century was not gonna make us prosperous in the 21st century. Um, but our focus initially was on, like everybody else, was on advanced manufacturing. Um, and in 2004, which is the report I want to talk about, is uh, that uh, Matt read about, uh, sort of the light bulb went off for Don and me, uh, that the economy had changed so fundamentally that the core characteristic of prosperous states and regions in America, and this is 20 years ago, uh, was um, was states that were over-concentrated in, in knowledge economy industries, not in manufacturing. And that, um, and that going forward, um, Michigan making that transition uh, was the key to uh, our future prosperity, Michigan being a high prosperity state again. So what we said in that report, and, and so that's first, uh, you know, which has been uh, in this state uh, a hard message to sell. I mean, we've, we, we really have a very strong vision in this state of, um, of prosperity connected to making things. It's just that the economy has changed so fundamentally since then. I'll go through, I don't want to do a lot of data, but I'll go through a little bit of data a little, in a couple of seconds. 
But secondly, which is probably even a harder sell, is, is that the core characteristic of high prosperity states and regions uh, that is common to them all is the, purport, is the proportion of adults, particularly young adults, with a four-year degree. In the knowledge economy, uh, the asset that matters most are professionals and managers. So what we said in 2004 is, if Michigan does not become more concentrated in the knowledge economy, and I'll talk in a second about what those industries are, and if we do not concentrate young professionals, we would get substantially poorer compared to the country. So this is 20 years since the report came out, and the report that Matt read about is we released the report again, unedited, without change. Not to take credit for getting it right 20 years ago, but because if we had to write the report again today, we would write the exact same report. So what's happened? In 1999, Michigan is 16th in per capita income. Today we're 39th. We're 13% below the national average in per capita income. It's the lowest Michigan has been since the Fed started keeping statistics in 1929. So we're poorer today than we have been compared to the country in basically a century. In 1979, Michigan wages are 18% above the nation's. In 1999, 5% above. Today, 10% below. So the core reason for this collapse in Michigan compared to the country is we've gone from being a high-wage state to a low-wage state. Uh, and um, the challenge is, is that the high-growth, high-wage sector of the American economy now is the knowledge economy. So the knowledge economy that, as we define it, is four industries, um, corporate headquarters, finance and insurance, uh, business and professional services, which is law firms, engineering firms, accounting firms, etc. And this category called information, which is uh, software, telecommunications, and old and new media. <clears throat> it, includes, um, it includes the knowledge part of the auto industry. So people that work at the GM Tech Center, are in professional business services, people that work in the glass house for four are at the corporate headquarters. Um, so, um, so the auto industry, uh, the, the, there's a large part of the auto industry that's, that's in the knowledge economy. Um, so those four sectors are now one in eight jobs in America. There are 24 million jobs uh, with an average wage of 130,000. Manufacturing is half the employment of the knowledge economy and half the wages. Manufacturing is 8% of the national economy, average wage is $65,000. So, and Michigan at the moment is over-concentrated in manufacturing and under-concentrated in the knowledge economy. And that fundamentally is the reason for 16th in 1999 and 39th today. Um, we are so, <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of how much, I mean, I really don't want to drive you guys crazy with a lot of data. Bring it. Yeah, you want to yeah. Okay, so you know, here's this is what's happened uh, over these uh, 20 years. So the per capita income, uh, about two thirds of per capita income is wages and salaries from work. Uh, no, no, it's wages, salaries, and employer-paid benefits uh, is how it's calculated. And and remember, this is per capita. So. In 99, 
uh, manufacturing work earnings nationally is $4,500 per capita. It's, this is all in uh, current dollars, so it's inflation adjusted. So it's 4,599, it's fallen to 3,600. On the knowledge economy, it was 6,500, it's now 10,000. So the growing part, I mean, this is the whole notion that we are, that we are not participating in the growing part of the American economy. In Michigan, um, in 99, manufacturing was $7,700, and it has fallen to 5,200. The knowledge economy was 6,000, it's grown to 7,000. So nationally, manufacturing's declined by $900. And so these, these figures are a combination of how many people work in those industries times how much they make. So manufacturing has less employees, lower wages, it's declining. Um, knowledge economy, uh, growing, rapidly growing employment and higher wages. So we're, I mean, we are still, so we're 30th in, um, in um, our concentration in the knowledge economy. We're 31st in college attainment of young professionals and the two go together and you end up at 39th. I mean, sort of the gold standard, the, the leading edge state in all this stuff is Massachusetts. They have the highest per capita income. They're first in education attainment and first in knowledge economy concentration. And, and if you look at states, the only exception to that rule are fossil fuel extraction states. So you don't have to be concentrated. It's, it's Wyoming, Alaska, and the two Dakotas. You take them off the table, you can predict the state's per capita income or region's per capita income basically by knowing knowledge economy and proportion of adults with a four-year degree. And, and we're just under-concentrated in both. And from our perspective, we would... So um, before I get into what, what to do about it, um, so here's the most scary thing about the work that we did. If the next 20 years are the same as the last 20 years, so all states keep growing at the same level that they've grown at, we will be 48th ahead of only Alabama and Mississippi. So that's the path we're on. And um, we at some point, we are going to have to figure out if we care about having a place with high wage jobs. If we care about a, being a, you know, which is sort of what we, at least it's the community I grew up in, was, was Michigan was one of the, Michigan was one of the high wage states in the country. What year? Uh, what year was I born? <laughs> oh, so in 79 sort of when we peak. 79. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like 40 years of decline, but the last 20 have been really bad. So sort of a slow decline in the 80s and 90s, and then the last two decades, a steep decline. Do you think there was union pressure that drove the auto industry to southern states as part of the problem and the equation in your study? So we didn't look at that. Um, here, right, so... I mean, I think one can make an argument that we were prosperous in 79. So take the unions out of it for a second. In 79, manufacturing was a high wage industry. Uh, in, it was hand in hand. Factories support the knowledge industry. Uh, sure. Well, Let's, uh, we're going to have QA after yeah. Sorry. both. Yeah. Because we're recording and uh, nobody's here going to hear what you just said. Oh. Sam Harris. <laughs> but the point I want to make is manufacturing, manufacturing is no longer a high wage industry. So manufacturing wages are a smidge below the national average for all jobs. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that's, that 65,000 is a lot less than 130,000. And um, so you've, 
you know, and, and at least from our perspective, there is no way that manufacturing is going to be a high wage industry again. So in 79, when we peaked, two things were true. Ma manufacturing paid more than the average job. Actually, a pretty good wage premium. And Michigan had a wage premium over all other states in manufacturing work. Both of those things have been lost. So manufacturing is now a bit below the national average in wages, and Michigan's manufacturing wages are the same as the country's. So both premiums are gone. And it's the loss of those premiums, along with their not participating in the rising knowledge economy, that's the reason you go from 16th to 39th. And the reason why we're going to trend towards 48th unless we make this transition. I mean, it, there's, there's just, I mean, unless their analysis is, is just absolutely wrong, like the next 20 years are going to be different than the last 20 years, it's, it's sort of the inescapable conclusion is, is that the economy is fundamentally changed. And the high wage, high growth part of the economy now is knowledge based. It's, that's just the American economy of the 21st century. And at the moment, we are, I mean, we would argue that both our reality and our vision is still stuck in trying to get 1979 back again. You can't. So let me end it there. Uh, and then we can open up for questions. Um, so that's, you know, I, I, I keep telling people this is not a good news story. Um, and, and Grimes and I have been talking about it. It's like our entire career has been chronicling sort of Michigan's decline. It's like, it's not fun. All right, that's Lou Glazier. Thank you so much, Lou, for coming.